Hello and welcome to Bloomberg Quint. We're debuting in the best way possible with one of the most influential investors in the world, Mark Mobius, the executive chairman of the Templeton Emerging Markets Group. Mark, thank you very much for speaking to us here thank on you. Bloomberg Quint. Um, I'm going to ask, start by asking you to give us some sense of what you make of the direction that global equities are currently in. And I know there are different forces um, and different pulls and pressures, but it's such a confusing and volatile environment. We had a difficult first half. The first three months uh, were all down. The next three months were about a recovery across most global equity markets. And in the second half, we've got you know, a FOMC meeting uh, later on this month. We've got a potential Brexit. We've got a US presidential election about to happen. What do you make of what this next six months will bring us? We're really at a turning point in the sense that, as you know, for the last three years, emerging markets have been on the back burner, so to speak. They've right. been underperforming the developed countries, i.e. the U.S. The U.S. has performed wonderfully. Uh, the U.S. dollar has gotten stronger against most of the other countries around the world. Now it's turning. The U.S. market, stock market, is peaking out. The U.S. currency is beginning to weaken against many currencies. And, of course, there's lots of confusion and concern because so many people are overweight in the U.S. market and the U.S. dollar. So they're confused as to what to do because Yellen is saying, I'm going to raise interest rates. So they're saying, well, maybe I shouldn't move. Whereas, on the other hand, if she does raise rates, it won't be very high. It'll be maybe, you know, quarter percent, a half a percent at most. And where does that lead most people? You're still sitting on very, very low-yielding uh, U.S. dollars. Correct. So I would say we're at this sort of turning point, and whenever you're at a turning point, you're at a very confusing point, a point at which uh, the anxiety is high. Mm. So at the confusing uh, uh, point, people tend to do nothing. They tend to freeze. You know, it's sort of the deer in the headlights. And of course, that's a dangerous position to be in because you may end up uh, sitting on assets that are going to perform very poorly. Okay. You spoke of maybe a marginal rate hike by the FOMC. Do you expect it to be just one this year? Do you think it could be two? We started the year thinking there might be four. The Fed stalked us back from that. And I know many, many market uh, watchers expect or say that much of this is baked into equity prices everywhere because we've spent the last, I don't know how many years, talking about a Fed withdrawal. Um, do you think it's all baked in? I think it's very similar to what we saw last year. If you remember, uh, they were threatening to raise rates, raise rates, raise rates, but it didn't happen until the very, very end, mainly because they had promised to do something by the end of the year and they had to make that move. But frankly, it was not warranted because inflation has not been coming up mm -hmm. to any great degree. The U.S. economy is not doing that well. Do you expect that if there is a hike, let's say this month or in the subsequent FOMC meeting, that emerging markets will be able to take this in their stride? I think they'll be able to take it in their stride much better than last few years. What do you expect the next six months to bring? Is there one overwhelming trend that will dominate equity markets? Uh, yes, I believe that there's going to be an outflow uh, in, from the U.S. into <coughs> markets around the world, global okay. markets generally, and of course that includes emerging markets because investors, particularly the very large investors, will realize that they are uh, dangerously overweight okay. in the U.S. So I think that is something that we will see going mm -hmm. forward. How much more of a recovery do you see in commodity prices in the months to come? And again, what kind of sort of uncertainty will that feed into global economic growth because we are at anemic growth yes. levels and therefore what will it mean for equities yet again towards the later part of the year? Yes, we've had a spurt sort of a bounce from you know the spring being pressed down too long. Uh, you'll see a little bit uh, downturn mm -hmm. and then another spike up in oil, in platinum, palladium, nickel, you name it copper, so forth and so on. Iron ore, all, all of that? Iron ore, so forth. You so another 10 to 20 percent increase, let's say? I would uh, say, yeah, 5, maybe 5 to 10 percent like that. Is what is you're estimating? Possible, yeah. Okay. Because, you know, reality has to come through at some point where people realize that uh, the, the world keeps on operating, things are being produced, and you've got to have raw materials for these products.
I want quick reactions from you on what you think the impact of some of these events will be. What if a Brexit takes place? What if Britain does just decide to exit the Eurozone? Um, do you expect that will lead to considerable volatility in global equity markets? Yes, definitely. There will be a lot of volatility. Okay. There will be a big impact on the UK and uh, in the EU as well because uh, you know a lot of the other countries in the EU that are unhappy about certain things may want to make a similar move. And that could be a very disastrous uh, situation for Europe in general. So uh, I think this is something to watch very, very carefully. It could have global repercussions. Okay. The U.S. presidential elections. Well, if Trump wins, uh, you know, do you see equity markets across the world reacting? I think they will probably uh, be positive because a lot of the expectations of Trump will not be realized. In other words, what he's been saying is not what he will be doing. Do okay. uh, and I think a lot of people feel that uh, they don't like what he says, but they like, they like the way he says it. Right. So I think uh, you're going to see a much more moderate stance if he does get elected. Okay. And are you a Trump fan, if I may ask? Or? I don't like what he says, but I like the way he says okay, it. Okay, fair enough. <laughs> All right. You speak very confidently of the fact that China is not about to hit a hard landing. And that's in sharp contrast to, let's say, for instance, what I heard George Soros say in Davos in January this year, when he said, if this is not a hard landing, I don't know what is, <laughs> right? So it's really <laughs> difficult for people like me to figure out, is China in the middle of a hard landing? Is it not? And even if it grows, let's say it waits between four to six percent because not everybody yeah. trusts China's GDP numbers. Is that good enough for the global economy? Uh, no, four percent would not be good. It would be bad news for at least emerging markets and uh, the rest of Asia. Uh, I think they will continue to achieve six, seven percent growth. I think what has been overlooked by many of the pundits is the fact that China is a planned economy. Correct. You've been saying that for uh, a while. They yeah. plan these things. If they say they're going to get 7% growth, they'll get 7% growth because they will have the inputs and they will give the orders to the state governors and to the provincial governors um, to spend and create this growth. Now, it may be wasteful spending. Uh, many companies will go bankrupt and so forth, but they will get the, that growth. Uh, the question of debt, of course, comes up. Yes. And yes, of course, there are problems with debt in many areas, but it's sustainable. If with uh, foreign reserves of three trillion, with the fact that the government controls all the major banks, uh, there is no, absolutely no reason why uh, there should be a crisis uh, to, you know, from because of debt. 